with the hand clap tonight, let's welcome the special apostolic envoy, Pastor Isaac Folaji. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Father, we thank you. Let's exalt him. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for all you have been doing on this mountain. Thank you for Winners Chapel International Arlington. Thank you for your presence that is mighty here. Thank you for men and women, boys and girls. Thank you for all the laborers. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I ask that by this meeting, open this church to the next levels. Father, let the totality of the apostolic graces back in the commission I represent deliver to Bishop David Oyedepo be released afresh upon this altar. Amen. That from this moment forward, every grace that answers to the altar of faith tabernacle will begin to answer to this altar. Amen. The drawing forces upon faith tabernacle altar are hereby released upon this altar. Amen. By this anointing on this floor, on this mount, on this altar today, whatever is commanded to go in the lives of men and women, they begin to go with speed. Amen. For it is written, out of Zion shall go forth the law. Every word of the Lord from this mountain becomes a law from now. Amen. When barrenness is commanded to go, they will go with speed. Amen. When sickness and poverty and shame is commanded to go, they will go with speed. Amen. Whatever is commanded to come, we answer with speed. Amen. From this day forward, signs and wonders in dimensions never known before, begin to answer to this mountain. Amen. And everyone saying a louder amen will be a first partaker. Amen. Everyone going home tonight with the biggest miracle will shout the strongest amen. amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Please get seated and give Jesus a big shout of praise. Oh, is that the best you can do in Harlington? Hallelujah. What a joy and privilege to be here as mandated by our father, the apostle over the commission, Bishop David Oyedepo, who has sent me to represent him. He would have wanted to be here physically to come and see us, know our state, and release blessings. Even though you are seeing the physical body of Isaac the spirit of Bishop David Oyedepo is here. Amen. And that spirit will reach out to somebody here. Amen. So as we receive the word today, the spirit of Christ will enter. Amen. Your testimonies will erupt. Amen. No one will leave this Sabbath the same way they came. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also very important, we need to acknowledge all the laborers in this church. Everyone laboring, sacrificing, and investing to see to it that things are working here. Beginning with our resident pastor. I thought you are clapping for Jesus. Our associate pastor, the pastoral assistants, all our statutory body members, church board, LCC, Dickens board, FMC, audit committee, elders council. People who are working and laboring behind the scenes. All service you need to work as. I thought you are celebrating Jesus for them. I'd like you to know, no one serves God at a loss. No one serves God and regret. So everyone serving God in this church, your rewards shall be open for all to see. Amen. Your rewards will make all your mockers to become your converts. Amen. You will become the envy of all your mockers. Amen. And for all of us who are not yet serving, I want to pray that by this meeting today, the grace to serve God with all your strength, with all your might, so that all the might of God will answer for you. 
receive it today. Amen. No one will be a spectator in this church. Amen. No one will be a journalist in this church. Amen. I mean, journalist in terms of we are only reporting what they are doing. You are not part of it. Praise the Lord. No one will be a fan just clapping for others. All of us shall be active players. All of us shall be leading testifiers. In the name of Jesus Christ. All our children are blessed. Grow up to serve God better than us. In Jesus' mighty name. Also very important, all of us who are waited on the Lord today. is the first day of our week of emphasis. For this great month of June. Your strength is hereby renewed. This month of June shall be a walkover month. Amen. There shall be no stress for anyone. Amen. The things that others are struggling to get this June, in your city position, in your office, in the house, in the church, God will be bringing blessings your way. Amen. Your days of running elter scatter, they are finally over this month. Amen. Remember also, this June is the first part of the midst of the year. And in every midst of the year, God levels every everlasting mountain. So whatever has defied solution that followed anyone into this month of June, they shall be leveled. Amen. Every concern shall be turned to open testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quickly tonight, before we impartition, the prophetic focus for the month is, I am a child of destiny. I shall not live like a destitute. Can we say that together right now? Can you say it convincingly right now? Each one of us, we shall fulfill the enviable destiny that God has ordained for us. No one shall have reasons to pity us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in our midweek services this month, we are looking at the subject, understanding the power of obedience of faith. Understanding the power of the obedience of faith. And this is part one. Understanding the power of the obedience of faith. In Romans chapter 16, verse 26, the Bible talks about the obedience of faith. Say me, the obedience of faith. Christianity will be a bunch of frustrations outside of obedience. God cannot help anyone beyond our level of obedience. God has a plan, a great plan, an enviable plan for all of us who are his children. Just as we heard in the course of the prayer of supplication, he said, I know the thought that I think towards you. God is thinking about you. Are you excited at all? I said, the most high, the almighty God, the possessor of heaven and earth, is thinking about you. You occupy his thoughts. And he has good thoughts. Great thoughts. Thoughts that the effort of man cannot accomplish. He has it towards each one of us. But those thoughts, those plans cannot come to pass outside of our obedience. Understanding the power of obedience of faith. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, it says, It shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe, to echo, first of all, diligent to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do. Then the Lord thy God, whose instructions you are obeying, will do what? We set you, we set anyone on high above what? See, and all these blessings shall do what? Shall come. You'll be blessed in the city. Amen. You'll be blessed in the field. Amen. No curse will operate against you. Amen. 
Now, the summary of these blessings is in verse 13. He said, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken, now verse 13, he said, you will become, the Lord shall make you what? The edge, and not what? And thou shall be what? And not what? That's God's plan. That's our destiny. We are ordained to be the edge, to be above only in every aspect of life, spiritually, in our career, in our business. We are on top concerning our health. You are in charge. You are in dominion. You are enthroned. Everything answers to you. Everything is subject to you. You are not subject to anything. That's the plan of God. That's our destiny. You shall be the edge. And not what? Sometimes I wonder, why did God use that illustration? You know, the tail is so useless that if you cut the tail of a lizard, what happens to the lizard? He just goes about as if nothing has happened. But can you cut the head of anyone and the person is alive? He said, when you obey me, you will be the head. The head means the body cannot do without the head. Am I communicating? Now, when they ask you for your passport photograph, what, parts, what part of your body are they looking for? Is it your leg? Is it your shoulder? No, because you can do leg transplant. You can do shoulder transplant. You can do heart transplant. You can do kidney transplant. Can anyone do head transplant? You shall be the head. You cannot be copied. You are original. You are customized. You are unique. You are special. You are rare. That's God's plan. You will be the head. You cannot be replaced. You will be so valuable that others will look up to you. You are the one determining the happiness. You will be the head and not the tail. <laughs> you will be in command. Whatever you say is what happens. That's the ultimate. When we obey God, that's the plan. But when we don't obey him, we become the tail. When we don't obey him, we become pitiable among men. But the grace to obey God from today, come afresh upon each one of us. Yeah. All the giants in scriptures were people who obeyed God in faith. Beginning with Abraham. Abraham was a non-entity, a sufferhead, a struggler at the age of 75. Can you imagine a married man at 75? Childless, broke, living with his father. And God called him and said, Abraham, after the father died, God said, Abraham, I want to change your story. I want to bless you. I want to make you great. I don't want you to die in obscurity. And what God is saying to Abraham is what he's saying to each one of us. God doesn't want any of us to die in obscurity. He said, I will make your name great. Great names will rise in this church. Amen. People will use your name to get jobs. <laughs> if you are there, shout the strong guy. Amen. Amen. The mention of your name will be opening doors for people. Say, but Abraham, arise and depart. And what happened? Abraham arose. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. He arose and departed. God came again. Abraham. You mean you obeyed me in faith, not even knowing where he was going. 
God said, Abraham, okay. I'm going to cut the covenant with you. You have to circumcise yourself. There was no anesthetics that time. You could have died of infection. Abraham didn't mind the risk. If God has said it, I will do it. Abraham went ahead and circumcised himself. And all made born in his house. God said, okay. Another time, God came. Abraham, I know you don't have a child. I'm going to give you a child. Abraham believed. Abraham changed his name. God said, Abraham, change your name from Abraham to Abraham. Abraham means father of many nations. Tell all your neighbors, tell your colleagues, tell your, everybody that my name is now Abraham so that they can mock him. Abraham went ahead to obey God. So people are mocking him at the back. See, father of many nations, he doesn't even have anyone. But Abraham obeyed. He wasn't minding the opinion of people. Please stop minding opinion of people. Long story short, Isaac came. Your own Isaac is coming. Amen. So long as you obey God, I say your laughter will come. Amen. Somebody's weeping is over today. Amen. So he obeyed God. Isaac came. God came again. Genesis 22 verse 1. And God tested Abraham. We have to be writing tests of obedience in our Christian work. Say me test of obedience. No one qualifies for promotion in a school without writing exams. Am I correct? And Christianity is a profession. You have accounting profession, engineering profession, law profession, medical profession. You have to pass the qualifying test before you are certified to practice. Am I correct? So in, the, in our work of faith, there are tests of obedience of faith. Remember, God told Abraham, in your seed will I bless the nations of the heart. And God said, that your seed, Isaac, slaughter him for me. Take him to Mount Moriah and slaughter him. Now, the question is, how will that promise of God come to pass? Abraham said, it doesn't matter. That's what they call obedience of faith. You don't know what will happen. But if God has said it, I'm going to do it. How God will now fulfill that promise, I don't know. Many times we use our natural mental faculty to want to reason out God. It doesn't work. Abraham obeyed and took the boy on a three days journey. So he had long enough time to change his mind. He trekked three days to sacrifice the boy. And when he brought out the knife to slaughter him, to kill him for God, verse 16 to 18, God came down. He said, now I know you fear me. Now you are past the test of obedience of faith. He said, now in blessing, I will do what? I will bless you. God began to swear. He said, God, you told us not to swear. He said, no, I break the law. This person has obeyed me. This person has touched my heart. I will break protocols for him. God began to swear blessings upon him. He said, Abraham, your seed shall possess the gate of your enemies. Is it not happening today? Israel is controlling what is entering Gaza and out of Gaza. He passed the test of obedience. God will never engage in examination malpractices. Even though he's the owner of the school, he will not promote any of his children that refuses to write the exams of faith. In your health, in your finances, in your career, it will test you. We keep writing test and test upon test and there's no limit to our lifting. When you stop writing and passing the test, that's when someone is stagnated. Abraham passed the test and the God said, now I know. Now I know. After 25 years of working with God, he said, now I'm convinced. I pray as we partake of the communion today, each one of us will get to that level. Amen. Bishop, we got to that level one time. 
after doing the sacrifice, God said, David, even if you don't want to be rich, it is too what? You have crossed the Rubicon. I've been testing you. I've been watching you. Because God will watch you. God will not promote and lift a novice. We must pass the test of obedience of faith to be enthroned. Throne is waiting for us. Spiritual enthronement. When you get to the realm that even when you are sleeping, witches can't come around you. That even when you are sleeping, you don't have nightmares. I tell you, I don't have nightmares. Because Satan knows that any nightmare I have, by the time I wake up in the morning, he will suffer losses. So he will warn himself, this man is sleeping, let me just organize myself away from him. <laughs> that means you are in charge spiritually. He said, when your obedience is fulfilled, you will avenge what? All disobedience. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. You will pray less for things when you obey more. Many believers are praying more on what they should obey more. Obedience is the strongest weapon in the, in the faith. Is it what? You won't need to gyrate. You won't need to sweat. You won't need to struggle. Just obey. They lacked wine. Shame was imminent. Jesus was there. He said, go and fetch water into the water pot. What happened? They just obeyed. Excuse me, we are looking for wine. You are asking us to look for fetch water. What is the connection between water and wine? Don't ask questions. Many of us ask too many questions. After that, second instruction. Fetch the water from the water pot and go and give the chairman of the wedding reception. What happened? They carried it. Now, in the process of obeying, between the time they, from the water pot to the chairman, the water turned to what? The best wine. There was no prayer. There was no reminder. God knows his responsibility. Let's do our part. Shame was averted as they obeyed. No one here will see shame. Yeah. What am I saying? Obedience will erase any form of shame. What is that area that shame is like inevitable? You are believing God for approval, for favor. Believing God for healing. Find out what God has said about that area. Line up with the demand of the promise of God. Every time we read our Bible, we see the promise and we see the condition. Hello? Now, when you see the promise, don't just quote or pray the promise. Just obey the condition. Line up with the demand of the promise. Hello? Line up with it. Now, we have read now. He said, oh, this blessing shall come upon you. Stop praying. Father, let blessings come upon me. You don't, you don't need it. Just obey. Hear the voice of God in that area. Is it about your finances? Is it about your marital life? Husband, love your wife. Wife, submit. Children, obey and honor your parents. Just do your part. Then all these blessings will do what? We call. He saw a blind man. Born blind. He said, go and wash in Siloam. And what happened? The man went and washed. And did what? And came back seeing there was no prayer. There was no shaking of head. All the Satan, all the forces responsible for that blindness, they cleared off. At the instance of obedience... No Satan, no witch, no barrier can stand when we obey God. Every Jordan we part when we obey God. Because when we obey God, God will go ahead of us. The might of God, the presence of God will come down. We are familiar with the story. When they were leaving Egypt, 
Red Sea in front. Army of Pharaoh at the back. What did God tell them? He said, go forward. Naturally, it doesn't make sense. Go forward and drown inside the water. That's obedience of faith. I don't know what will be the outcome, but if God has said it, I agree. And they took steps. And as they put their feet inside the water, as if they are going to perish, what happened? What had parted? Like a wall to their right and a wall to their left. And they walk on dry ground in the midst of water. Obedience will open impossible doors. No door is difficult to open. Spiritual doors, marital doors, career doors. Not one is difficult. But when you hear the voice of God and obey, those doors will open. Because as you are obeying God, God will be with you. And when God is with you, he said the mountains saw him and skipped like rams. Jordan was driven back. The barriers, the mountains, they all left. We cannot enjoy God outside of obedience. There's nothing we do that can substitute for obedience. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 and 23. 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23. Say, for obedience is better than what? Than sacrifice. To Ekin than the fat of rams. For disobedience, it's like a witch. You become like a witch. <laughs> and God will not allow a witch to, to, to live. Grace to obey God. Come afresh upon each one of us. Amen. Oh, if you are there, shout a stronger. Amen. Amen. The throne is waiting for us. To be the head, to be above, to be in charge. To command dominion in our health, in our business, in our finances. But all at the mercy of what? We need to pray. Life is, is designed for comfort. Life is not an up a task. God designed life for sweetness. So when people are struggling, let's check our obedience level. Let's check what? For instance, you want to enjoy favor with God. Favor is kingdom. Do what? Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. Prioritize the things of God. So there's no point begging God. God favor me. God, do something. Mm -mm, don't beg him. Just obey it. He said, the set time to favor me has come. Because thy servant, I'm a servant. I'm serving the interests of God. You can be a pastor and not be a servant. You may know it and preach it. Having a seed is different from planting a seed. You can be distributing seed to others, but you are, you are not planting it. You can't have any product. You can't have any fruit. Hearing the word of God is like having a seed. That's revelation. But until you apply that revelation, until you plant the seed, you can never have the product. You can't have the crop. Am I correct? Many of us, we have plenty of seed inside our notes. Preachers have plenty of seeds that they preach to people. That's how they can be preaching prosperity and be a beggar. But until you, are, you apply the things you are preaching, it can't prosper you. So favor the things of God. Psalm 34 verse 10. He said, they that seek the Lord shall not do what? Shall not want any good thing. Those who are seeking God those who are prioritizing God, they won't lack any good thing. They won't, want, they won't lack good health. They won't lack good money. 
They won't lack good marriage. They won't lack good children. I thought you had said it to that. Yeah. That when people ask you, what's your prayer point? You are scratching your head. That's what happened to me. They say, what do you want? I don't even know what I want. God is supplying all my needs. Amen. As I keep busy doing my part. So I pray, Lord, help me to obey. That's all I need to do. That's all I need to do. You will see favor. Amen. I said you will see favor. Amen. People in this church will swim in the ocean of God's favor. Amen. So obey God. You want to enjoy favor with men? Be a blessing. Be a what? Blessing. Say, I will bless you and thou shalt be a what? A blessing. Had value to people. Be a problem solver. Be a help to others. Go out of your way. To put smiles on the face of people. To relieve the worries of people as a lifestyle. Be a working house of solution. Let people be able to, to refer to you and say, excuse me, I have a child. Let me go and meet you. But I so and so. Sister so and so. Let it become your habit in your family, in your neighborhood, in the church, in the office. Then with time, you are creating a future for yourself. All the heroes of faith that were favored, they were serving God and they were also serving humanity. Abraham prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah, for God not to destroy them. Joseph, we know the story of Joseph now. Joseph solved problem for Pharaoh. Genesis 41, verse 41 and 42. He interpreted the dream of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, nobody's as wise as you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, without Joseph begging, without Joseph appealing, he said, see, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. Take over the land. Look at verse 42. <laughs> Some Joseph will rise in this church. Amen. And Pharaoh took off his ring and put it. Now, if Pharaoh, if Joseph had applied or begged or requested Pharaoh, Excuse me, can I have your ring? What do you think will happen? In fact, they will jail him. Am I not correct? But without Joseph asking, without requesting for it, Pharaoh will remove the ring. I said, my friend, take. He brought out his chariot, his Bentley, his Lamborghini, his Rolls Royce. I said, Joseph, I know you are working. You, you are doing like this Benz before. Now, take these vehicles. Joseph never asked. Joseph solved a problem. And he was favored. Daniel was favored by the king. The king had a dream and forgot. He said, all of you must tell me the dream and interpretation. And because Daniel was connected to God, he was able to solve that problem for the king. And what happened? Daniel 2.46. Daniel 2.46. And the king did what? Bow down to who? Kings will bow down to you. Amen. I said kings will bow down to you. Amen. Daniel chapter 2. Verse what is that? The last verse of that scripture. And bow down. Daniel. And give him gifts. Never begged. He never begged. I said, never begged. Nobody here will beg. Yeah. David was favored by King Saul. You are familiar with the story. David killed Goliath. He terminated the shame of a nation. And the women began to sink. Saul has killed 1,000. David has killed what? He became the envy of the king. A time came, the king sent for him without going to uh, the elite military school in America. Is it? They call it to a point. What do they call it now? West Point. Thank you very much. West Point. Without going to military school, they made David. If, in fact, they applied to the father of David, excuse me, Jesse, we want to apply for your son to become the ADC to the king, to the commander-in-chief. 
All those who went to West Point who had military degrees, they were not considered. But David, who never had any formal military training, was favored. Because he saw problem for the nation. Jesus had favor with God and with men. Why? He was going about doing good. And doing what? All that were oppressed of the devil. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 and 3. And there were certain women who had been healed of evil spirit. What did they do? They were ministering to him. Verse 3. Of their substance. Jesus never begged. He was solving problems. He was being a blessing. What more? Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 28. Verse 4 to 6. He went to the highland of Patmos. Okay, let's go to verse 6. And the, the king there, Publius, had a sickness. And Paul was a blessing. He prayed for that man. Verse 7, verse 8. He prayed for that man. And the man, the chief man of that city, he prayed for him. Verse 8, verse 9. And the man was healed. After that, what happened? He said they honored them with what? Many honors. Paul never begged. Paul was favored because it was a blessing. So let's obey the instruction of being a blessing. Be a blessing in rescuing a soul. Be a blessing to the body of Christ. Be a blessing to the church. Don't just come to church, hear the message, and shout amen. After every service, you go. You want favor from God? Serve his kingdom. You want favor from human beings? Be a blessing to humanity. But if you are a blessing to humanity without serving God, nothing will happen. Because except God build the house, the labor in building will do what? So the kingdom first. Say me the kingdom first. So you are not wasting your time praying kingdom advancement prayers. There's a throne waiting for you. Say there's a throne waiting for me. He said, you'll be the head. You'll be above only. Say, I'll be above only. I love that word. Above only. In every aspect of life, above only. Among your peers, you are standing out. Amen. You are not lost in the crowd. Amen. Academically, you are standing out. Amen. Maritally, you are standing out. Amen. So when you obey God, God will help you. God will cover your hairs and multiply your efforts. See, I received that grace. Understanding the power of obedience of faith. That's why we are taking the communion today. Because you cannot obey what you don't understand. Hello? If I start speaking, um, maybe some of us don't understand what they call um, Aosa language. If I say stand up in Aosa, you are just looking at me. If I speak Russian to you now, you don't understand. They say stand up, you are, just, you are smiling at me. I say, come, you are going. Because you can't obey what you don't do what? Psalms 119, verse 34. So by the communion today, the grace to understand that every instruction of God is for our benefit shall be delivered to us. Amen. Psalms 119, verse 34. Let's look at that scripture. It said, give me understanding. Psalms 119, verse 34. And I shall keep thy law I shall observe it with what? With my whole heart. You can only observe. You can only obey the instructions of God you understand. You can't truly really know what will bless you and not obey it. Am I communicating? So, you can't truly really understand giving and not be a giver. Because when you give, you are not helping the receiver. You are helping who? I'm helping myself. The hand of the giver is always what? On top of who? And in the realm of the spirit, when you give, physically, it appears as if you have reduced. But in the realm of the spirit, what have you done? You have increased. Proverbs 11, 24. There is he that scattered and does what? And yet, does what? Increase it. So, when you give, physically, you reduce. Maybe you have $1,000. You gave $500. Physically, like you have $500. But spiritually, you have increased. 
And when you increase spiritually, because the spiritual create and control the physical, the increase in the realm of the spirit, in a short while, will do what? We translate to the physical. And when you plant two seeds of corn, for instance now, the harvest comes like how? Minimum of 600. You planted two. You have two or three cups. And each of them have 600 grains. So when you are giving, you are increasing. So you can't understand giving and be stingy. You can't understand giving and be, and be squeezing your face giving time. To give your wife is a challenge. To give children is a challenge. To give to God is a challenge. But that is over today. Amen. I said that is over today. Or oh, if you agree, shout a stronger amen. amen. So, obedience of faith is the master key to provoking the manifestations of the wonder, of the wonders in our life. We want to see the wonders in our destiny? Obey God. Say, I will obey God. Oh, I'm not hearing somebody right now. I will obey God. Quickly, as I round up, three levels of obedience that work. Number one, the obedience that work must be revelation rooted. Revelation what? You are obeying based on the word of God. Revelation rooted. Because anything you do without understanding will bring no results. Hello? Proverbs 21, verse 16. Say it that one direct out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So anything we do without spiritual understanding will bring dead results. Hello? You may give, but if that giving is not revelation guided or revelation initiated or monitored, you may not see the process of giving. In fact, it is the revelation of the obedience that will empower the level of your results. Matthew 13, 23. He said, a man have a seed. He said, because he have understanding, 30-fold understanding, 30-fold result. 60-fold understanding, 60-fold result. 100-fold understanding, 100-fold result. Zero understanding will bring what? If you come to church and drop an offering and say, I'm helping the church, I'm helping God, nothing will come from it. Hello? But if I come to church and say, I'm giving this because I know this will trigger blessings that will make me rich and terminate sorrow. You are giving based on what? Understanding. If you as a son, as a daughter, you give it's your substance to your parents, you are honoring them and that it will be well with you. So no matter what is happening in the world, as you give with that understanding, even if your parent is a billionaire and what you have is part of what your parent has given you, your parent giving you 100,000, you just say, okay, my parent, I want to give you 500. And you give with understanding that it will work for you. Somebody there? So you are not giving to your parent because your parents are in need. You are giving to your parent because you need, the, you need it to be well with you. Hello? You are given that it will be well with you and that you will live long. Everyone in this church will live long. Amen. So, revelation rooted obedience. For instance, why are you coming to church midweek? He said, everyone that appeared in Zion, they do what? They go from strength to strength. Now, Reader's Digest, a secular magazine, came up with a report, many years a research report of over 25 years that it was discovered that those who come to church minimum twice in a week, they live longer. You do what? It's a secular report. They did a, 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 um, a research for covering about 25 years that those who come to church minimum twice a week, they, why? Because strength is what determines longevity. So, you are not coming to church just because if I don't come now, you know I'm a deacon, you know I'm a pastor, you know I'm the head of ushering. If you are coming to church because of that one, you won't get anything. I'm coming to church because I'm increasing in strength. 
spiritual strength, emotional strength, physical strength, financial strength. And your strength is what determines your victory in the battle of life. He said, if you faint in the days of adversity, what happened? So your method of increasing your strength so that you prevail in every challenging time is continual appearance in Zion. Every time you come to Zion, strength is added. The you that come to church is not the same you that leave church. There's something deposited. You have to be aware of it. Are we together now? Because knowledge is powerful in this kingdom. Revelation rooted obedience. So I'm not coming to church just to come and say, well, you know, it's my practice. No. I'm coming to church because every time I come to church, my strength is increasing. Every time I come to church, light is coming. Every time I come to church, my life is being serviced. We have come to service. You take your car to the workshop for your car to be serviced. They change the carburetor. The oil that is getting black is renewed, becomes fresh. Am I correct? They change the filter of your car. The oil filter. They check the brake part. So when you are traveling, you don't just break, press the brake and the thing will fail. So there are, there are spiritual mechanics, angels, every time we come to church, who are servicing our heart, servicing our kidney, servicing our spirit, servicing our emotions. So you must have that understanding. I am going to church service. Spiritual forces are servicing my life to make my life better. That's why I'm going to church. I'm not going to church just to say people know that I'm a Christian. Are we getting it now? It's when you have that, have that understanding. That's when the blessings will drop. Revelation rooted obedience. See, I received grace today. Number two, as I begin to round up, obedience that work is prompt obedience. Say me prompt obedience. The loudest you can right now. Because delayed obedience is equal to disobedience. Prompt obedience. It says strike when the iron is what? Hot. Make A while the what? The sun shines. Those are English proverbs, but it's scriptural. Promptly. It says, behold, I come quickly. Revelation 3.20. If any man hear my voice, if I stand at the door and knock, if any man hear my voice and do what? And open the door, I will do what? Nobody knocks at the door forever. Somebody is knocking at the door. Hello, is anybody in? After some time, what will happen? Go. So when God is giving you instruction, it's a door. It's a knock at the door of your heart. My son, talk to that person about Christ. Invite that person. Or give to that person. Every time you hear the word give, it's never Satan. Satan will never tell you to give to anybody. I'm telling you. Giving is not, giving is not Satan's nature. Giving is divine. Giving is supernatural. The natural man wants to get all they can. Can all they get and sit on the can. That's natural. So, the moment you hear the instruction, open the door. Otherwise, if you now open that door to do it afterwards, the power that will bring the testimony has gone. Can you imagine um, when Jesus said, go and fetch water into the water pot? They said, no, no, let's go and check Google. Let's go and do research and find out what's the connection between water and wine. And they were doing research. They went to uh, UTA. They went to all the universities around. Let's go and find out from the researchers what the outcome of uh, what's the connection between pouring water into the water pot and having a wine. They are doing Google. They check everywhere. It's taking them about three weeks. They now came back. Jesus came. We are ready to obey you now. We have found out that it's correct. They now went to fetch water. That water will never become wine. Are you getting me now? They have lost it. He said, walk while you have the light. That means there's a lifespan to light. There's a lifespan. There's a duration to every instruction. There are certain things God will tell you to do. If you don't do that time, God will raise somebody else to do it. 
I remember I was pastor in our church in Portacourt. One sister came to meet me that, oh, God said they come and repair a broken part of the church. I said, why not? Now, after that, she went, to, after one week, she said something happened. Now, by Wednesday, somebody else came and fixed it without even telling the church. When the sister came and saw it, she started crying. I said, well, you have lost your blessing. So everything is time tagged. Immediately God speak to Abraham. Abraham move. God spoke to Abraham to go and sacrifice his only son in the night. First thing in the morning, he got up. If Abraham had waited, Satan would give him one million and one reasons why he should not go. The zeal, the zest, the energy to obey instructions will die. That's why when you are receiving inspiration, inspiration requires immediate engagement, not long courtship. When inspiration comes, you capture it immediately. Because it's not from you. You say, let me get to first. I'm right down. You are forgotten. The same way with God's instructions. Prompt obedience. Say me prompt obedience. The grace for prompt obedience may be received today. Amen. God has a plan, remember, to make us the head, to be above only. But it will happen as we are receiving instructions, either in our private studies or we come for church services. God will give you certain instructions. Obey it immediately. The blessings will come. You will see blessings. Amen. You will see favor. Amen. You will see honor. Amen. In closing, finally, the obedience that work willful obedience. Say me, willful obedience. Can you say it one more time right now? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. Willful obedience. Willful obedience. It's not enough to obey. Is it from your heart? No grudging obedience will work. I said First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. Willful obedience. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. That means, if I don't do it willingly, what will happen? There will be no reward. Willful obedience is what brings the testimony. May I say this? How do I know it's a willful obedience? Many times, don't wait to be instructed. Don't wait to be told. Initiate obedience to God's word by yourself. Do what? Initiate it. Be proactive. That shows it's emanating from your heart. You are not under any pressure of a message, of a pastor, of a preacher. If I do it willingly, I have a reward. If I don't do it willingly, I do it grudgingly, I do it frowning my face, there will be no reward. For every laborer here, you are going to see rewards. Your service in the secret, your reward shall be open for all to see. Amen. By your rewards, your mockers will become your followers. By our, by our labor, by our labor, and through our rewards, we shall be above only. Amen. I pray for everyone in this church. Everyone will be looking down at you in a short while from now. They will need to stretch their neck before they see you. Amen. The lifting forces of heaven will catapult you to the top. Amen. But all by obedience. Let's turn to our feet. Raise your voice and receive grace. Father, receive grace to obey your voice, to obey your word willingly, promptly, and guided by revelation. I receive that grace today. I receive that grace today to obey in faith. I'm not waiting to see things physically. I'm not waiting for situations and circumstances to be perfect. At the instance of your word, at the prompting of your spirit, at the promptings of your voice, grace to move, grace to take steps, irrespective of everything contrary. Father, I receive it today. I receive that grace today. I receive that grace today. I refuse to lose my throne. A throne is waiting for me to be above all, to be the head spiritually to be the head, maritally to be the head, in my career, in my business, in my health, to be on top. 
I refuse to be on the floor. I refuse to be in the pit. I receive grace to be on top, to stand out among my peers. I receive by the grace of obedience. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have received that shout, a stronger amen. amen. Now, by this communion today, a miracle will happen for you. Amen. Hebrews 13, verse 20. I want you to believe God. Let's take it with understanding. Revelation rooted obedience. He said, as often as you take this, do this in mercy of me. So when we take it with the revelation, we take communion with understanding, they will see wonders. Amen. Now look at it. I said, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Now, verse 21, we we'll do what? Will make you what? In what? Walking in you, that which is what? Well pleasing in his sight. That means when we take the communion, there's the power of perfection. Power of what? No blemish. No shame. No shortcoming. No inadequacy. Everything is on point. No delay, Amen. no rejection, Amen. no shame, Amen. but glory, Amen. power, Amen. wisdom, Amen. strength, Amen. honor, Amen. glory, Amen. blessings. Amen. He said, through the blood, it will make you perfect. So, the communion is not for those who are perfect. It's for those who are imperfect to become what? So I don't know which area of life you need perfection. Your health, your children, your marital life, your finances. It will be perfect in alignment with God's plan. To be above, to be the head, only. Say me only. only. No one here will go down. Amen. No one here will be grounded. Amen. Everyone here will be flying in the skies. Amen. There's so much space in the skies. No two beds collide. It's crowded on the floor. It's time to go. Amen. By this communion, everyone is going up. Amen. Spiritually going up. Amen. Maritally going up. Amen. In our career, we are going up. Amen. In our businesses, we are going up. Amen. Our children, they are going up. Amen. As we partake of this communion today, our children, our families have a family of stars. Amen. No non-entity will rise in our family. Amen. Where do you find stars? Where do you find them? Up, up, up. And Jesus is the bright and morning star. So as we partake of his flesh and his blood, whatever make them to be a star, a star that shines even in the morning, becomes our portion. Amen. As we partake of this one, sickness will die. Amen. Every satanic implant will be flushed out. Amen. Every curse will be broken. Amen. And for the sake of everyone here, everyone in our family, they will partake of these blessings. Amen. He said, for the sake of Joseph, God bless the house of Potiphar. I said, for the sake of every partake of this communion, blessings is coming upon our household. Amen. Even our in-laws, they will partake of these blessings. I said, by this communion today, you become the Joseph of our generation. Amen. Slavery is over. Amen. Suffering is over. Amen. Imprisonment is over. Amen. Every form of captivity is over. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Quickly, all let's bow before we take this communion. The first step to partake of the blessings from God is to become a member of the family. To give your life to Christ. Jesus said, come unto me. All you that labor, all you are struggling. I want to give you life. I want to give you rest. I want to take you to the top. I want to take you away from the floor. Wherever you are. You want your soul saved, rescued. You want to enjoy divine help. You want God to fight your battles. You want God to make you the head. Wherever you are. 
carry your bags and come Bible. Come and meet me in front here. Today is your day of salvation. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church. Old and young. Or in case you are coming to church, God bless you, they are coming already. Very fast, they are coming already. Keep coming, keep coming. Nothing can hold you bound. Nothing can hold you bound. Make today your day of salvation. Or in case you are here, you gave your life to Christ before. But certain things happen and you took your life back. But today, you need to rededicate your life. Because if Christ should come now, you know you will not make it. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church. It doesn't matter your title. Wherever you are, come and join this sincere one. What God ate is hypocrisy. Wherever you are, come right now. I thought it was clapping right now. Keep coming. Keep coming. Today's your day. The power of sin is broken. The power of Satan is broken. Light has come. Darkness is over. Light has come. Darkness is over. Struggling is over. Oppression is over. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I pray with this precious one, everybody in church, stretch your hand toward this communion. I'm going to declare what you want. As I partake of this communion, Father, perfect my health, perfect my career, perfect my marital life. Just keep it there. Everybody start praying. Right? Now say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Have mercy on me. Jesus, I believe you came to this world. You died for my sins. You arose the third day. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now I know I am born again. Amen. Let me pray with you, Father. Let your blood avail for him. Write his name in the book of life. You are saved today. The grace will keep you in the faith forever. You will never go back to the world. The blessings of the kingdom will answer for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please open your eyes, my brother. Congratulations. You have taken one of the best decisions of life. Please follow this man and go right now. Now, the table is here by declare blessed. Officials come very quickly. The bread is blessed and the cup is blessed. This table will bring about our perfection. Every imperfection, spirit, soul, and body, they are terminated by this communion. We are empowered to live like Christ. We are empowered to favor the kingdom of God. Empowered to, to be a blessing to humanity. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The bread is blessed and the cup is blessed. In Jesus' name. Let's go ahead right now. The choir, let's go. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able.
voice and declare your takeaway from this service. What is it that has struck you? What is that word? What is that blessing? What is that testimony? Raise your voice now and declare it. As I'm living here, I'm living and transformed. I'm strengthened. I am serviced. Every part of my body is serviced. From now, I am the head. I am above only. Spiritually, emotionally, in my career, in my profession, in my finances, I am above. I was standing out. I am a star of the Most High God. I refuse to be on the floor. Blessings are coming. Blessings, I'm not pursuing them. They are coming to me. From today, supernatural perfection. No more blemish. No more question mark. No more inadequacy. No more delay. No more denial. No more rejection. No more misfortune. No more setback. I am going forward. Forward ever. Backward never. Forward ever. Backward never. I have become the Joseph of my family. For my sake, everyone connected to me, they are enjoying blessings. They are enjoying favor. They are going forward. They are sharing testimonies. Lero Kote, raise your voice and speak right now. You shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. Rekatole brakatale. Jenkalo kata karakata. The adversary shall not resist. He said, I have given you a mouth and a wisdom which all your adversaries, they cannot stop it. They cannot withstand it. Everything you are saying, you are saying from now. This June, you will shed tears of joy. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I have come as a saint partaker with the undertaker. Stretch your hands here. Father, everything that your people have declared in faith, they have obeyed willfully, promptly, and by revelation, they have declared their expectations. Whatever you have declared in faith, I decree them be released into your hands. The word is hereby declared to be made flesh for you. This your hands will never beg. Nothing will fail in this your hands. Everything you lay this hands upon will flourish supernaturally. This your hands will be on the neck of your enemies. Every exam that any one student writes under the sound of my voice, with these hands, you are coming out in flying colors. Any exam that your son, that your daughter writes, using you as a point of contact with this hand, they are coming out in flying colors. Failure is forbidden. Defeat is forbidden. Every job tender contract you apply for, you tender for with your hand, you shall be preferred. You shall be favored. You will be above only. You will never be the tail. You will matter to your generation. You will be a blessing to the body of Christ. Now, this moment, I release power to this your hands. This your hands, they are hereby turned to miracle hands. When you lay this your hands upon the sick, the sick shall be healed. The oppressed shall be set free. You are released today as an agent of liberation. Everything that work in the hand of the one that sent me, even Bishop David Oyedeko, they will begin to work in your hand. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name. If you agree, shout the stronger. Amen. You are excited to come to church. Shout the stronger. Amen. Next Sunday, there will be an avalanche of testimonies here. Your own testimony will be prominent among them. That your long awaited change has finally happened now. That healing has taken place. That favor is here by release. That blessing is here by release. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next time I come to this church, we shall be in our facility. This church, by that time, will be minimum 10 times our current size. And everyone laboring in this church, you will be a first partake of the blessings. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So please let no one just be a nominal member. Be an active, fruitful member of this church. Operation Rescue is on. Determined by all means, get one person and bring them to church. By all means, next Sunday, that's prompt obedience. And watch out for the blessings. You are blessed already. Amen. I said you are blessed already. Amen. Remember today is day one of this week of emphasis. Tomorrow is day two. And Friday day three. Then on Saturday, our empowerment, what time is it on Saturday? Come again. 8 a.m. Our empowerment summit. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. I said the Lord bless you. Amen. And now, go in peace. Amen. Swim in the ocean of God's favor. Amen. Next Sunday, return with your living testimonies. Yeah. Your sleep tonight shall be the sweetest. Yeah. You are waking up tomorrow full of strength, yeah. full of life, yeah. full of vitality. Yeah. You arrive at your workplaces tomorrow. Favor is waiting for you. Yeah. Favor all the way. Yeah. Emptiness is over. Yeah. Weeping is over. Yeah. Your rejoicing is here. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Let's share the glory to the fellowship right now. Surely, all the days of our lives. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Amen. Greet minimum two, three people. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. God bless you. Remember Sunday, encounter with destiny. Ensure you are here with somebody.